Hey guys, Mr. Backward here. This is part two of lesson 8.2. We've got two objectives for this video. We're gonna multiply two matrices together and we're gonna use matrix operations to model and solve real life problems. Now matrix multiplication is a little bit different than scalar multiplication. We're gonna be taking a matrix times another matrix. So let's say that matrix A has the order M by N and matrix B has the order N by P, then the result when we take matrix A times matrix B is going to be an M by P matrix. Now one thing I like to do to figure out my order of my new matrix is just write down their orders. So the first thing we're starting with matrix A was M by N, and we're multiplying it by matrix B, which is N by P. Now, one thing we should notice is that those n values in the middle are the same, and they actually have to be the same in order to multiply two matrices together. So then the result that we get, if we just ignore those middle pieces, is gonna be a new matrix with order m by p. The process that we go through when we multiply matrices together is called row by column multiplication. And like I mentioned, the number of columns in the first matrix has to match up with the number of rows in the second matrix. It was that middle part of our orders where those two numbers matched up. So when we do row by column multiplication, in order to find our new entry, C11. So the number in the first row, first column of our new matrix, what we do is we take the first row of our matrix A times the first column of our matrix B, and then there's some addition that we do along the way there as well. To find our C12 entry, we're gonna go first row times second column. For 2-1, we'd go second row times first column, so on and so forth, and we would just continue that until we're completely done with our matrices. And this might be a little bit confusing just looking at it written out like this, but I think it'll make a little bit more sense once we start getting into some actual examples. So here we've got a couple of matrices that we're gonna to multiply together. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is their order. So this first one has three rows and two columns. Second one is two by two. So those middle numbers are matching up. So we can just kind of ignore those. And our new matrix, when we multiply these together, we've got the three by two. So we're gonna end up with a brand new three by two matrix when we multiply these two things together. So we're gonna do that row by column multiplication stuff. So I'm gonna grab first row from our first matrix and first column from our second matrix and we're gonna multiply pieces together. I'm gonna to take the negative one from that first row times the negative three from the first column and then we're going to add on the three from the first row times the negative four from the first column. So negative one times three is three and three times negative four is negative 12, so we get negative nine. That was our first row times the first column, so that goes in the position, first row, first column, negative nine. And then we're gonna continue that. So now we're gonna go first row times second column. So this first row times the second column, and we're gonna do that multiplying and adding thing again. So I'm gonna go first entry, negative one, times first entry, two, and then we'll add on the three times our one, so we get negative two plus three, which is one, and that's gonna fill into the first row, second column. Then we're moving on to the second row. So we're gonna go second row times first column. So we've got four times negative three, and then we'll add on negative two times negative four. Well, four times negative three is negative 12, and negative two times negative four is eight. So we get negative four as that value filling that into our matrix. Then we'll go second row, second column. So let me use a different color here, second row, second column. So we're gonna go four times two plus negative two times one. And let's see, eight plus negative two is six. So we'll fill that in. Then we're down to our third row finally. So third row, first column. We're gonna take five times negative three and we'll add on zero times negative four. Well, five times negative three is negative 15. We'll fill that in. Then we've got one last value to look at. We're gonna take the five zero row times the two one column. So five times two plus zero times one. So we get 10 there and we'll fill that in. So when we multiplied these two matrices together, we got this brand new three by two matrix. 
Taking a look at our next example, we've got a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 3 matrix. So when we multiply these together, we're going to get a brand new 2 by 3 matrix. So let's run through and do our row by column multiplication. If we take first row times first column, 0 times 0 is 0, 1 times 2 is 2, add those together, we get 2. If we go first row times second column, well, 0 times 3 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, add those up, we get 1. And if we go first row times third column, well, we got 0 times negative 2 and 1 times 4, so we get 4 in that third spot. Then if we go second row by first column, 7 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. Second row times second column, 7 times 3 is 21, plus 2 is 23. And if we go second row times third column, 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, plus 8, we get negative 6. These next couple of problems we're going to do on our calculator. So let's get that thing fired up. I already have the matrices for problem A entered in. So if you go over to edit, make sure you have this 3 by 2 matrix for matrix A. If we check out matrix B, we've got this 2 by 1 matrix. So make sure yours matches up with what I have. Now to multiply these two matrices together, we're going to go second matrix A times second matrix B, hit enter, and it'll give us this brand new 3 by 1 matrix. To do problem B, we'll have to edit our matrices. So matrix A is going to be a 2 by 2 matrix, so we'll enter in that information. We'll also have to edit matrix B. That one is going to be a 2 by 3 matrix. And when we take second matrix A times second matrix B, we get a brand new 2 by 3 matrix with these entries. As always with these operations, there are different properties that we look at. So in these properties, capital A, capital B, and capital C all represent matrices, and that lowercase c represents a scalar. So we've got an associative property with matrix multiplication, which just means that we can regroup things as needed. Uh, we've also got a distributive property for matrix multiplication. We can look at it a couple different ways. And then we've got an associative property taking a scalar multiplication combined with some matrix multiplication multiplication. Last thing we're looking at is called an identity matrix. And an identity matrix is made up of all ones along the main diagonal, and it's got zeros in every other entry. And one thing about this identity matrix is it has to be a square matrix. So 2 by 2, 3 by 3, 4 by 4, something like that. So here we've got an identity matrix. If we just looked at a small portion of it, I'll highlight this in red. So let's say we had this 3 by 3 matrix right here. So we can see the main diagonal is made up of all 1s, and every other entry in our matrix is a 0. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.